All right, in this video, we're going to look at a problem that's sort of a step towards doing evaluating uh, infinite series or one of the ideas to do so. And what we'll do is um, we're just going to sum up a, a series kind of generically from n equals 1 up to some value k, 1 over n plus 2 minus 1 over n. And again, a lot of times what we'll do for infinite series is we'll sum them up to some value k, and then we'll take the limit as k goes to infinity. So uh, that's kind of where we're going with this a little bit. So to get a feel for this, I always just start plugging in numbers. So let's see, if we plug in 1, I guess we'll get a third minus 1 over 1. Plus, and then if we plug in n equals 2, we'll get a fourth minus a half. Plug in n equals 3, we'll have a fifth minus a third. I'm going to plug in a couple more. If we plug in n equals 4, we'll have a sixth minus a fourth. Uh, maybe one more. Then we'll have a seventh minus a fifth. Okay, so then generically, if we go up to some value, uh, if we stop at k, well, we'll have 1 over k plus 2 minus 1 over k as our final term. So we kind of have to figure out, you know, what would happen generically in this case. Again, this is our n equals 1 term, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4 n equals 5, and then generically our last term is when n equals k. So let's see. Um, if we, you know, if we only just plugged in n equals 1, nothing would happen. We would be left with a third minus 1, and that would be, you know, whatever that, that, that would be our value. If we plug in n equals 2, notice again, sort of nothing, it doesn't to me look like anything would just immediately cancel out. If we plug in n equals 3, though, at n equals 3, things will start uh, canceling a little bit. So at n equals 3, it looks like the uh, negative 1 third and the positive 1 third would cancel. Okay, so we'd be left with negative 1, negative 1 half, and then we would have uh, a fourth and a fifth left over. If we go up to n equals 4, now the negative 1 fourth will cancel. So we still have negative 1 and negative 1 half. But now when we stop at n equals 4, we would be left with a fifth and a sixth. If we go up to n equals 5, well now the negative one-fifth and positive one-fifth would cancel. So we would still be left with the negative one, negative one-half. I don't see how these are ever going to cancel out, right? There's nothing ever to cancel out uh, the negative one and the negative one-half. Okay, but again, if we go up to n equals 5, notice we're left with a 6th and a 7th. So if we stop at n equals 5, we're kind of left with, you know, sort of one bigger, a 6th and a 7th. So I claim, you know, if we got out, go, go all the way out to n equals k, uh, the negative 1, nothing would cancel out with it. The negative 1 half would always be there. But then, you know, just like if we uh, stop at 5, we're left with sort of one bigger in the denominator and then two bigger in the denominator, uh, a sixth and a seventh. Uh, I, if we go all the way out to n equals k, we're going to be left with positive 1 over, well, uh, sort of one larger in the denominator, so k plus 1. And then we also have sort of two larger in the denominator, so k plus 2. So I claim generically, um, you know, if we sum up to n equals k, we'll, be ha we'll have negative 1 minus a half. Of course, we could combine this into negative 3 over 2. And then plus 1 over k plus 1, plus 1 over k plus 2. Um, and that will be our sum. You know, we could always get common denominators and all that stuff, but uh, that is generically what we would be left with.